So in this video, I just want to show real quick how to uh, check solenoids. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to check the uh, purge solenoid. The purge solenoid is usually up in the engine bay somewhere right here. You'll see from your EVAP canister, it runs, see this hose rose, um, runs all the way from the back of the, uh, where the f uh, fuel tank is, where it has the... Uh, canister where it collects all the uh, evap and obviously uh, some people don't know the purpose of the evap but the purpose of the evap is uh, sitting in hot temperature like we have here you're gonna have uh, the fumes the fumes are gonna evaporate and you don't want them going into the atmosphere so they they collect into the charcoal canister and right here is the purge solenoid and in the rear there's a vent solenoid that allows the air to flow freely through in order to vent it through and basically this activates when you're driving when you hit a certain uh, set parameter usually when you're above a certain rpm or something this will uh, activate this solenoid and it'll relieve the gases this is often caused for a lot of vehicles for the uh, <clears throat> i'll put a link in the description to uh, the codes I'm talking about. It's the uh, EVAP small leak, large leak, stuff like that, the P0455 or something like that. Anyways, recently I had several of these and this was ended up being the problem, but I, so I wanted to show a buddy because he, he had one of these I had. Uh, he wanted to know how to check these and I'm pretty sure there's videos out there about this, but I just wanted to check it real quick. So right now I put the key on the accessory where your radio is running where your radio is going to be active right so you're sending power now the first thing you want to do is you want to identify the uh, which wire to check basically is what you want to do it, just to check this system itself just to see if it's working properly um, so I got a test light let me fix this I cannot see at all I got a test light right here and uh, I have the outer alligator clip right here hooked up to a, a ground. Make sure your ground is good. I'll hook it up to right here. I cannot see where. Okay. I'll hook this up and then I'll, I'll touch the battery with this and uh, it lights. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to unplug this. And this is also just for checking the electrical. When you're checking the electrical on any of these type of solenoids, this is just a two wire solenoid. You have a power coming from the fuse and then it goes through the coil, which is in here. There's an electrical coil that when it has a, a power and a ground, it produces a magnetic field that opens and closes a plunger. And I'll set a link to the description in the video where I actually cut one of these things apart. Um, so the first thing, I have the alligator end of this thing hooked up to a ground, a known good ground, because I just touched this to the battery post and it lit. And so what I want to do is I just want to touch on here. Okay, and you don't want to get too crazy with it. You don't want to jam it in there. I don't know if you can see, but it, it's lit red. It's kind of bright out here, it's hard to tell. And I try the other side, and the other side does not light. So basically, this wire is the fused wire. Now, right now, if I was to touch this to a wire to a ground, it would just blow the fuse. So that's what would happen. So it is lighting it. Okay. So the right wire is the power wire. And a simple, quick check to see if there is actually, con uh, if it's connected. Now another thing you could do right now is you can go in there with an ohm meter and check the ohms and you could check the resistance and uh, check the specifications for whatever vehicle you have. Now what I'm doing though real quick is I just want to see a little bit of flow of electricity. So I know the one on the right side is the power from the fuse. So the fuse supplies that because I got the key on and now I'm going to get this. I'm going to get in here and I'm going to back probe it. This is called back probing. So I got in there. You want to make sure you're nice in there. You want you don't want to make you want to make sure that you don't go crooked, that you don't go sideways or nothing like that. I still have this hooked up the alligator and to the uh, <clears throat> to a ground, known good ground, and I'm just gonna touch this, and you see it lights. So right there, there's not a lot of amperage flow. There's not a lot of obviously there's no amps 
flowing through this. This is milliamps, but there is flow through it, telling me there it's at least not broken. At least the internals of this thing aren't broken. Um, it, it at least tells me that. And uh, if I get a straight wire and I touch it right now, you'll hear it quick. But because this doesn't flow a lot of electricity, now this is a LED test light, this one right here. So I don't hear any type of clicking noise with it. But I get this other type, which is just an incandescent. So it's going to flow a little bit of more electricity. And that's why they call those LEDs computer safe. Because, you know, even if you hook up something wrong, you're not going to blow the um, computer, you know. Now, nothing's going to happen right now until we start the car and the, the circuit driver for the computer would activate this giving this a ground opening that solenoid when it wanted to open it now if you this one does not flow a lot of electricity either but i'll get you close to it and you can actually hear it is clicking that solenoid so like i said i just have the alligator clip hooked up right here now it's hard to tell and i could get just a regular wire and do it so I'm just gonna tap on right here and you can hear it clicking a little bit barely but like I said if I got a if I got the full wire I just got a wire hooked up to it you're gonna hit, hear it click a lot more but for what we're doing that would work just fine and uh let me see. I was looking for a wire. I don't really need to do it. The point is though, when you got a when you got a wire going to it right there, it's gonna it's gonna produce a lot more um, amperage because it's gonna flow straight from electricity's coming in here, running through the electrical connection in here, which is basically a coil of wire that produces a magnetic effect when there's a ground applied. Power on this side, ground applied on this side. And it's going to produce a magnetic effect and it's going to open and close that wire so basically what i tested right now as i tested the fuse is good there is continuity through this coil because i'm getting power out on the other side so that tells me that at least this uh this perch solenoid's not broken internally it tells me that the fuse itself is good it tells me that it is actually activating and I could just get a wire right now, like I said, and, and, and do it like that, but there's no really need for me to check that right now. But if you want to do that, you got to be careful if you're doing it. You should probably use the fuse jumper cable and, uh, you know, use a low amp fuse or whatever in case you, you hook something up improperly and then listen for that click on that solenoid. So if you, but if you really want to test the solenoid, what you want to do, you get one of those midi backs. Mine's dirty right now. It's all greasy. I don't want to bust it out, but I think you guys get the point. So you just want to identify the circuit wire, just like I showed you. The one on the right is the power, and it goes inside, wraps around all the coils, and then comes out here waiting for a ground. The computer supplies that ground. But what you want to do is, if you want to activate it yourself, unplug that this hose right here. This hose right here. Just unplug that hose. So that's why I got that pulled out right there. So unplug this hose right here. This hose you see right here. Take off this, unplug it, get your, your MIDI vac, hook it up to it where you pull vacuum. Just pull a little bit of a vacuum. Make sure the key's on like I told you. Identify the circuit and then tap that wire that I just showed you with uh, how I activated the coil. And the first thing is if it's holding if it's holding the vacuum while you're applying vacuum and it just let it hold there for five ten seconds if it does not hold vacuum then that means this is bad so that's one of the reasons you might have like one of those uh those small leak large leak evap codes because quite often this is one of the problems or if not the hoses that are leading up to it but so you hold a vacuum you pull a vacuum on this hose right here wait five ten seconds make sure it's holding a vacuum and if it is then you do then you do what i just showed you you touch a, a test light on it if it's a, a if it's one of the um, incandescent test lights it'll open it enough where it allow it'll allow it to a flow the air will flow through it so that shows you the circuit 
is good, everything's good. One thing that doesn't show you though is if the computer's commanding it to turn on. And uh, so what you would want to do in that case though, if you have a, uh, if you have a, what do you call it, diagnostic tool that can allow you to control this, what you want to do is activate it on and off the purge solenoid and then listen for the click and also listen to see if it is controlling if you're getting power here and what you want to do in that instance is you would take this end hook it up to the power end like right, right here and then you would want to go to this other end right here you would unplug this hook it up to this and then turn the computer on and off and you would be waiting I would use I would actually use this one though for that case and then I would wait for the light to turn it on and off and that tells you that the wire going from the computer to here is able to control it. So I guess this video is more or less about solenoids and how to check the wiring and actually have the check for this one for example the uh, purge solenoid but you would do the same thing basically for the vent solenoid but the thing is this is normally closed this thing is normally closed and it does not allow the flow of uh, air. The vent solenoid is normally open, so it'd be, it would be the opposite. It would allow air to flow, and then when you would activate it, it would close it. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But a buddy was asking me about this. I know there's probably other videos out there. I wanted to make a video and just show them the video. Um, and a lot of vehicles, uh, Asian makes, especially like the Korean makes, these open and close thousands of times throughout the life of the vehicle so they go bad and they cause that leak and it's hard to find the leak so uh, anyways if you have any questions comments leave them down below thanks for watching comment rate and subscribe